Okay, we are going to be having a look at water conflicts and in this video in particular we're looking at the hydrological cycle and also the idea of green water and blue water flows. Most of you will know the hydrological cycle relatively well um, considering you have done it low down the school in both geography and I'm sure science as well. Uh, so you'll be fairly familiar with this particular model. Um, the model itself uses the idea of inputs, stores, outputs and flows. shouldn't really need to go through what inputs uh, and outputs are. They're fairly obvious. Inputs of precipitation, outputs of discharge and uh, this change of uh, evaporation and evapotranspiration. So they should be fairly self-explanatory. Just as a reminder, uh, we do have stores and flows within this um, cycle itself. So obviously some of our flows are going to be things like surface runoff and river flow, etc. They will be um, allowing the water to move through the system, so move through this cycle. Uh, we also have stores. Stores, importantly, could come in the forms of ice and snow on the top of mountains, could come in the forms of um, lakes, uh, aquifers perhaps for groundwater, uh, would all be a good examples of stores of water. When we talk about green water flows, we're often looking at the idea of trans uh, transpiration or interception um, by vegetation, which is why it's called the green water flow in the first place. Uh, sometimes you can have evaporation from other surfaces, lakes, um, sometimes evaporation directly from rivers, sublimation from um, the snow high and, and ice higher up in mountains. Uh, but generally speaking, the, this type of flow is unavailable for use by us, really. It, it goes back out into the, um, into the unusable part of the hydrological cycle, so we don't really get to use it. Um, but it does serve very, very important functions for both the ecology uh, and, and global biomes and also for the hydro, uh, hydrology of uh, our river systems and our hydrological systems. When we talk about blue water flows, this is talking about um, the available source of water. So this is much more available to us. Not entirely, but it, it's much more available to us. Uh, so if you think about this uh, in terms of surface runoff and um, percolation into the rock strata, uh, infiltration into the soil, uh, and also groundwater recharge. So we have these flows that are going across the surface uh, and under the ground. So they are very, very important, um, and we obviously get to use these sources um, in order to keep ourselves alive, because water is important, we can't live without it. Uh, so we, we're looking at that as a blue water flow, so it's important to uh, remember the difference between the two. So just to recap, green water uh, and blue water flows are very important in the hydrological cycle. We obviously use the blue water flows for our own purposes. Uh, we're going to look at the levels of that in a, in a different video. Um, but it is worth noting some of the volumes uh, of water that's actually transferred through our systems. It is a massive amount of water. We often forget quite how much water uh, that we have on Earth um, and how little is available to us. That we're going to look at that in a separate video uh, as well. So those are green water and blue water flows.